Hello fellow Hexplorers, I'm Pruitt and this is Jim Davis and it seems like a lot of people get lost in wilderness exploration and they just can't seem to hack it. But, but, we're gonna get them through this pillar of play and give you the support you need with these wilderness exploration hacks on this WebDM. Worlds of WebDM Weird Wastelands is our first book, and it's live on Kickstarter now. It's an environment-based toolkit for DMs and players where we give you everything you need to create player-driven 5e games in the fantasy post-apocalypse. We're introducing new support for wilderness exploration, giving you a complete class, the Scion, 12 new subclasses, tons of locations with maps, monsters, NPCs, adventure hooks, and hey, it's us so you know we're going to include badass encounter tables and more. We're writing it exactly how we think a 5e book should be, well-organized, full of references, and our WebDM wisdom, with tips and support in how to make the content easily fit into any 5e game and run the best games of your life. Back it on Kickstarter now. Link here and in the comments and description. All right, Jim, let's, uh, let's, let's talk a little bit today about um, exploration, wilderness exploration. Yeah. And uh, the problems therein, maybe some ways... Mm -hmm we can navigate them, shall we say? Certainly. These wilderness there are exploration certainly problems. Ways we can navigate them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So fixing wilderness exploration. Um, I, I, first off, I think it is in need of fixing in, mm -hmm. in our modern uh, fifth edition era of this uh, uh, world's most popular of the fantasy games, as it were. Um, mm -hmm. Simply the fast because... travel era? <laughs> right. There's just, there's a lot going on with um, the exploration pillar overall and, and sort of wilderness exploration specifically. Like, there's just holes in the rules. There's places where there's sort of vagueness and inconsistency. There's a whole host of uh, player facing options and the like that, that either bypass uh, a lot of what makes wilderness exploration fun and interesting. Um, and then there's also not a lot of DM support for making it more fun and interesting and meaningful. And so I do think it is in need of, 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 of fixing. And part of what we're doing with Worlds of Web DM, uh, The Weird Wastelands, is this is our fix. <laughs> this is mm -hmm. how uh, we see uh, the rules of 5th edition supporting wilderness exploration uh, and the changes that we're going to make to uh, address some specific issues that, that I've experienced and sort of seen others express uh, about that. So, yeah, yeah. this is uh, what we're here for. Yeah. I mean, people say all the time that, uh, you know, exploration, it's boring, it's whatever. Um, right. But I think we all know that the fix is in on that. So let's get to these fixes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. But, uh, but, but where shall we start? What's, what do you think is the, 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 the first place to, to look at uh, when it comes to fixing your, your exploration? Yeah, so I think the, the first thing to really look at is narrative context and, and to a lesser extent, pacing. And these two mm -hmm. sort of go hand in hand uh, and are related to what a lot of players and, and groups experience, which is that traveling in the wilderness, exploring a, a wild place and navigating that environment, that that style of play just doesn't seem engaging. That it seems as though the choices that are there aren't necessarily meaningful. They don't impact what's going on. A lot of times you'll see things like, this isn't where the story is, or, or like, why are we doing this boring part? Nothing happens during travel. Why don't we just skip to where we're going so that we can get to it already? And so it's, I see that as partly based on Sort of like there's no narrative context there's nothing to like hook the players into caring about this moment or this journey that we're undertaking and then also sometimes it just takes a long time to get through that and and you know the the desired play is to like just skip to the end get to the good parts um and i think that's a shame we're leaving a lot out of our games when we skip that there's a lot of well, really cool moments of play you know yeah, I'm imagining. Uh, you know, I see this 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 argument a lot online. I'm imagining Lord of the Rings. If you actually have it, where why didn't they just get the eagles and fly? It's like, well, because you would you would you wouldn't have a movie because the adventure was getting there. That's the whole the point there, yeah. of the thing. Like, yeah. obviously, uh, you know, 
we come from the generation that grew up playing Oregon Trail and not oh, so sure. much yeah. uh, Skyrim where you just click the <laughs> click the town and fast travel there. But like that but that's the thing is that's what we're trying to reintroduce here. It's like no no no. The thing that's fun is trying to survive to get to where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> just Yeah, and to survive there in a state that you can do what you want when you get exactly. there and, and to not just be run ragged. And, and for the record, I really don't like fast travel in my video games, my open world video games. So like I play an open world video game to experience the open world and I don't like skipping parts of it. So some of this is a mindset thing. You really have to want this to, you know, on some level, but like there is a story in the journey itself and accounting for things like session length, play you know like how long it takes to actually resolve the events of the game at your table like mm -hmm. those things aside saying that like there's no story in the journey that there's nothing worth interesting there's nothing that's interesting worth focusing on is like i said leaving a lot on the table and so with worlds of web dm uh, weird wastelands what we want to do is like provide support for the DM to give that narrative context, to say, this is meaningful. The decisions that your players are going to be making while they're on a journey are like, they matter. They affect the course of events. You know, uh, it's mm -hmm. not just about where they're going, but how they get there. And, and the friends I think they make along the way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Like, exactly. That's the adventure is the getting there as much yeah. as what you do. And so, uh, the ways that we're going to address that uh, in the book are by a series of like prompts and encounter generators and and a way of structuring uh, wilderness exploration and travel so that it's both simple to use and doesn't take up a lot of table time so that it, it addresses that kind of like the slowing down of the pace. We want to make sure that the pace is nice and good and quick and move through it quickly, but that it also generates interesting situations where the player's choices matter. And that's the big thing, like more so mm -hmm. than having a procedure for travel. It's the something interesting happens. It is worth pausing on this moment to, to figure out what's going on. It, this is a moment where the consequences of, of success or failure matter to what's happening. And that kind of constant contingent events that come up, like what happens here affects everything that follows after is the beating heart of emergent gameplay, right? Like the choice, context, consequence, and then the repeating of that as the situation changes and evolves is what drives this kind of game forward and what hooks players in and builds investment and, and just makes it the best gaming <laughs> you could uh, possibly have. And like, it's also simple to present. It doesn't have to be yeah. complicated. It doesn't have to be uh, disconnected from what else is going on in your games. Yeah. Well, let's, let's dive right into that. Uh, because the, the 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 first part of this um, is is something that uh, complaints that we hear a lot. I don't I don't want to keep up with my rations. I don't want to. I just want to be able to write rations and water, and that be that. And mm -hmm. you know, uh, I know I played a lot of games where it didn't matter as long as you have water and rations written down. Yep, you're fine. You know, you're fine. But, yeah. yeah. But that 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 doesn't serve the setting that we're providing here. Uh, very no, well. No, it, not it, at very, all. It, 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 it banishes my suspension of disbelief uh, for at least a minute. Um, and so, uh, so what, what are we going? What are we going to do about this, Jim? This this resource tracking. Yeah. So um, the the honest truth is, uh, having to do a bunch of like you know triple and and uh, quadruple digit uh, addition can be a hassle. It does take time. There's a lot of people where it's not a skill they practice a lot or one that they're just talented in. And even with, you know, automation and calculators and all that other kind of stuff, it still isn't the most like user-friendly way to track resources. And yet we don't want to throw this baby out with the bathwater. The tracking of resources, the managing of them is part of what makes wilderness exploration engaging and fun. If you can just say, yeah, I spent my requisite two weeks, uh, you know, some gold on two weeks worth of rations. Like I don't have to worry about this ever again. The DM's never going to ask me about it. I'm never going to have to take it off my character sheet. Like then that part of the game isn't real. It's not like it doesn't have an impact on play. And 
the fun of wilderness exploration is like knowing that your survival is not guaranteed. Your prosperity isn't guaranteed. You might arrive where you want to be tired and wet and cold and having lost all your gear <laughs> and hungry. And like that, that is as much a part of the adventure as you arriving there in pristine condition with all of your you know, resources uh, ready to go, that they're equally valid uh, outcomes for play. And so we want to take resources seriously, but, but the other thing is like, we don't want to have them be so um, concrete and rational, right? There's another element of the adding up a bunch of, uh, you know, numbers you found in the equipment section for how much things weigh or cost. That's like your characters don't really know all that necessarily. Like they know they've got a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. but like how much they have, they know, they know exactly how much they're going to need and can buy exactly that much. That's also leads to uninteresting outcomes. So we want to address this in, uh, in our book by introducing resource uh, usage die and introducing some uncertainty into how many resources you have while also embracing abstraction to say that like, if you zoom out of it, if you're willing to accept a bit more suspension of disbelief that a, a supply rating, right, or a gear rating or a provisions rating um, is, you know, is rated in a certain die size, D6 or D8 or whatever. And that every time you use that resource, you roll on it, it comes up a one or a two, then it depletes, knocks down to another die size. And that like the things you can do to both manipulate that die, like the ways that character abilities could influence that, whether it bumps it up, how many times, you know, can you roll a one and ignore it, that kind of thing, like opens up a door for like abilities that the characters can have that are meaningful for the exploration uh, portions yeah. of the game. And then also like preserves the uncertainty of like, this could come up two ones in a row and now we're out of food, <laughs> you know, like, what does yeah. that mean? Rats get in it, vermin, did it go bad? Um, so like it, it, it uh, continues to produce interesting outcomes, which is, you know, what we're here for. Well, definitely. And uh, being able to kind of pare it down to a mechanic like that, I think will at least give something uh, players like something familiar. You know, you're in mm -hmm. combat, you know, you, you know, or you're healing from combat and you roll your hit die. Well, you rest, you need to eat, well, roll your provision die. Uh, see what mm -hmm. happens. Do you eat just enough or do you let your hunger take hold because, you know, you're rationing, you know, and having that uncertainty built into the die roll. Uh, I think uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, how, how it's how it's received. Um, Certainly, uh, yeah. But uh, but what about beyond that? What about uh, is that now is that including is that including ammo or is uh, is that uh, kind of something else to, uh, to consider? <laughs> I yeah it, it includes ammo right especially we're talking you know post apocalyptic wasteland that that means scrounging you know it, mm -hmm. it's ready made motivation to go digging around old ruins and wrecks of the old world you know is that you've got stuff that you're using up constantly and you need to replenish and so it's similar for ammunition you know the the chaotic and hectic kind of uh, moments of battle, you might drop arrows out of your quiver. You might fire one and, you know, it misfires. Like it, it, in terms of like considering the game, you, you embrace a higher level of abstraction to create something that's easier to play with. If after the end of every battle, you look at your quiver and you go, I have a, a D10, uh, ammunition die here and you roll it and it comes up a one and now you're back down to D8. Then in your head, you just go, well, I guess in that battle, more shots were fired than I rolled dice for, right? Yeah, <laughs> like those more wild things shots. happened, <laughs> yeah. right? Like more things happened than these, than these moments where I got to interact with it. And, and that the, the gameplay, the working through mechanics and resolutions and character abilities, die rolling, all that isn't like all that happens in the fiction. It's just mm -hmm. the gameplay portion of it. And that the fiction comes first and the fiction is more expansive. There's more to it, more things happen. And, and it also prompts us to imagine, you know, like, oh, wow, I, you know, I only took a couple of shots that battle and, and I lost, you know, now I'm down to one more. Well, why might that be the case? And that those questions open up the door for player participation and sort of what happens here, what, what was this like? Um, mm -hmm. But it also is there to just make things a little easier 
and you accept that it's sometimes it's not going to make sense and you're going to have to smooth that over because now you're no longer having to count individual arrows uh, which is yeah you know, <laughs> speeds things up <laughs> it, well exactly because when i think about that uh just like having a die type that i roll at the end of you know you know when i think back to playing like a laro bow singer rest in peace mm -hmm. Alero, um uh if i thought about just having to roll a die at the end of a combat and be like okay there we are that's what i got we're good because i was that 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 d-bag that was like i had like quivers of arrows on my horse and you know because i was sure, like i can't yeah. i can't run out of arrows i'm an archer like i can't run out of arrows but like yeah how does that make sense though like are you literally rolling around with 200 arrows just bundled up around you <laughs> yeah. you know like, like like that's the yeah. thing is like what like i would think i would much rather embrace just having a die type so it's just kind of like yeah you have some arrows there you're constantly making them out of stuff you find right. and it's just like this them up afterwards, yeah. exactly picking them up you know maybe you chipped one and you shave it down it's a little shorter but you know it still shoots you know things like that but like abs like we're like you're talking about abstracting that i think i would have much preferred that and had a, a better experience than worrying about running out of arrows and then looking at my character sheet going like why would i have that many arrows that just that doesn't make any right, sense like, where am i carrying the ball yeah, <laughs> yeah certainly certainly yeah yeah and and that level of abstraction applies to you know provisions like we were talking about earlier where it's like this is just your supplies like it encompasses a lot it comes to your food your water the, the things you need to repair the stuff you have the consumables that you have in a day and like that's okay we're we're accepting that this doesn't like represent exactly what's in your pack inventoried out and hyper detailed because that takes time and is tedious so we it's you know you roll the die see if you have it does it make sense does something seem weird about it that's an opportunity to use your imagination to fill in the blanks mm -hmm. Yes, most definitely. So uh, moving on from resources, uh, there's also some some mechanics that uh, that that 5e has in its current state that um, when you present this wasteland as it is for it to be genuine, um, you might have to we might have to do a little tweaking. Right. So yeah, uh, let's, let's walk through that. Right. So one of the other big things about uh, 5e and wilderness exploration is that there are a great number of ways uh, uh, and options that players have at their disposal to auto succeed or uh, completely hand wave away what would otherwise be interesting moments of play. And mm -hmm. let me sort of explain this by, by an example. Like, I like playing rangers. I really like the ranger archetype. I really like the idea of someone who's good at survival and fighting and knows some stuff. It's very appealing to me that way, but it also just like screams adventurer. Right. And when I play a ranger, I am, I'm playing it in part for those moments where something terrible is, could happen in the wilds. And were it not for me being there making decisions, our party might not be able to find shelter in the rain or cross this impassable river uh, safely or, you know, find the secret passage through the mountains or whatever. And that I don't want to skip those moments. I, I don't want to either give the DM an excuse to say, oh, you don't need to worry about that. And as a player, I don't want to have an ability that, that takes away that scene from me. Because while it's cool to say I never get lost in the wild, what that means is that those are all moments that we're not going to play through now. Like those are all times that we could have had some tension, some stakes, some something meaningful happen. Like what if we did get lost that I, I, I find myself longing for it. Like I, I want that. <laughs> I, I came, I played this ranger to be good at moments like that, not to bypass them completely. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I'm coming from with this whole thing where it's like, we're looking at, uh, class abilities, at spells, at parts of the game that make it too easy and the temptation to just say, yeah, don't worry about it, uh, is there. Uh, to just say, like, well, wait, wait a minute. Those don't have to be moments you skip past. What if we presented those moments in a different way? And then because you have class abilities that make you good at this moment, you're rolling with advantage or a bonus, or you're able to do things on a success that others can't like to no longer say like you automatically just find food or you never get lost or you're you know, able to conjure perfect shelter that 
those are things that skip past the interesting parts of what make this gameplay fun. And so we want to present options that still give you something to do, but that aren't uh, auto successes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. they're not just hitting the skip button. Just skip, skip, skip. Right. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, right. You know, I, because I'm taking seriously, and I think, and I think as game designers should take seriously that players choose options that speak to them that they either, you know, want to be good at or something maybe is a hassle and they, they want to choose this option so that it, it, it no longer is a hassle. And so I don't want to remove those things from play. You know, a lot of times you'll see people say like, oh, get rid of natural explorer or the outlander background or th mm -hmm. these spells. And it's like, well, I don't want to remove things. I'm here to add more to the game, not remove more of it. <laughs> like what I want is an option that doesn't cut out gameplay. And I, I, if you want to be able to conjure a magic hut, then you might just be conjuring a magic hut out of whatever materials are around there. And it's sturdy and, and structurally sound. And it'll keep the rain off your head. Not that it rains in the wasteland, but when it does, or, it's terrible. Or, and yeah. <laughs> you know, more importantly, it keeps the sun off your head. <laughs> keeps the sun off your head and, and keeps the ghouls at bay at night. You know, they'd have to break in you know it would it'd be noisy you could defend it but it's not like a sphere of force it's a it's a hut made of rocks and mud and sticks you know yeah that kind of thing do we do you want to get into magic food is that it, it, like not as a culinary uh exercise but like as far as good berry and like yeah good the reason to good water yeah. yeah the reason to tweak that especially in uh weird wastelands as it is presented <laughs> Magic food is one of those one of those parts of, of like modern fantasy gaming that I find weird, if only because my sort of just understanding of fantasy as I've grown up is that you don't eat magic food. Magic food is what fairies give you when they're trying to trick you. Or or that it's the kind of food that like a, a genie's gonna summon, but it doesn't really fill you because it's magic. It's it's literally nothing. Um yeah. you know, fifth edition is different in that respect it doesn't embrace the fairy tale nature of magic in that respect because it's like oh yeah you can just conjure food and it th those things exist to ease the burden of uh, uh of parts of wilderness exploration as well as to serve as benchmarks of power in the same way that fireball is a benchmark of your combat efficiency as a mage right like i can now blast a lot of you for a lot of damage being able to create water or food or whatever out of nothing is a benchmark for those classes as a way of saying like, this is, I used to have to worry about this. I don't anymore. My sense for, in 5e is that a lot of these abilities come too early and don't really come with a cost, maybe a spell slot, which is trivially easy to get back. And, and you can just keep doing day after day um, or their rituals perhaps. And like that creates a, weird situation for me because like number one there's a narrative there that we're not exploring which is these people are out here eating magical berries and magically conjured food all the time and part of the premise of the book is that magic doesn't just go away when a duration of a spell runs out it has a residue that sticks around and that accumulation creates a wasteland um so what is eating nothing but like enchanted berries for days on end do to you like what is eating food that's been purified and flavored with magic like how does that affect you mm -hmm. and my mind goes to like it could affect you in ways of like your mood or behavior it could be like it's nutritious you know it, it might taste all right uh or perfect too perfect uh with uh, with some magic but like is it what your body needs? <laughs> like, is it what your soul needs? Uh, you know, <laughs> one of the things about wilderness exploration is like, it kind of sucks to have to go camping. Like I love camping, right? Mm -hmm. It's really fun, but it also kind of sucks. It's just a little uncomfortable. Uh, you know, when you get back from, you know, roughing it somewhere and you get to sleep in a real bed and with, you know, in a climate controlled room, like, oh, that's really nice. This is this is luxurious. And so, like, I, I think there's a space there to introduce both, like, weird complications and things like, well, you've eaten too much magical food and now you can only eat magical food and you're going to become sort of spell warped and, and mutated. Um, 
too like you're just it just doesn't give you what you need if you do this too often you're going to get flaws and uh you know other personality uh um, you know, things that represent, you're just, you're hangry. You're like you're not satisfied, mm -hmm. um, you know, get you through the day, keep those constitution saves at bay, but it's not what you need, you know? Yeah. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I get the, uh, yeah. I get the hangry flaw. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to starve exactly. to death, but it feels yeah, like exactly. you are all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it I, to me it highlights one of those things about fifth edition where it's like by adding in the backgrounds with the personality uh, traits and and the ideals and bonds and flaws, like it opens up another avenue for other pillars of the game to influence. And why shouldn't exploration, you know, why shouldn't you be able to be inspired by by things you find out in in uh, the wilderness? Why why shouldn't you be able to be affected adversely? when you're just miserable because you're tired of eating the same stuff and sleeping out in the middle of nowhere. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 uh, it's great. It's a lot to, lot to play around with. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> what would you say as a closing statement here for the, for as far as fixing, uh, wilderness exploration and, uh, our, our, uh, our attempts, uh, and mm -hmm. doing so, or at least, uh, the, our version of it, uh, in with the, yeah, with the upcoming, with the book. Certainly. Yeah. This kind of challenge-based play in which you take the, the harshness of wilderness exploration seriously and you say that like what happens out here and the decisions the players make mean something is immensely fun. It, it, for me and my personal experience, both as a DM and a player, I have seen so many people play these games uh, in this way and like they get these strong attachment to their character, they love it, and, and it like really changes the nature of the game for them, uh, especially when like they're in the driver's seat, they're making decisions, things like that. And what I would say is that it's not a style of play that a lot of people get to experience, so you do need to kind of come into it with an open mind. There are parts of this style of play, the resource tracking, kind of dealing with day-to-day -day survival that might seem punitive or seem like tedious or why do we care about it? But challenge-based play where it's like, we're dealing with the wilderness, this is a post-apocalyptic wasteland, how we get places matters, like, except that that's part of the adventure too, that that survival is there because your character needs to live to the next day in order to be a hero the next day. And that being heroic isn't taken for granted. It's something your character has to like strive for and struggle for. And then like the fact that they both survive with their day-to-day -day needs and want more than that and have higher goals. Like that is some, oh, that, oh man, that is some great role playing. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, what we hope is that our weird wastelands will deliver that for you through all of the tools and rule support and inspiration that we're going to be able to pack in there. Hey everybody, hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, if what we talked about sounds interesting to you, why don't you check out our Kickstarter, click that link. We are funding right now for Worlds of Web DM Weird Wastelands. So check it out. We've got all different kinds of pledge levels, PDF, basic book, deluxe set, different kinds of add-ons. Why don't you check it out, go and click that link, back it, support it. Really appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you.